wanted to talk about the basis of probability so you can kind of have a, a kind of a 10,000 foot view of probabilities and you won't get fooled by you know probabilities or fooled by randomness it's this really good book out it's called fooled by randomness by um, um, Nassim Tlaib and it's 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 one of my favorite kind of books he used to be a a floor trader back in the days and he traded options and so forth so he has an understanding a strong understanding of options um, and and he's he's primarily a buyer of options which we are not but i like to listen to the other side i like to listen to why people are buyers why would they do something that has best the best probability you can have as a buyer is 50 50. Um, and the reason why he he does that is because he he has this concept of anti-fragile and he has he actually made another book that's kind of titled that and it's basically he wants to he wants to make money when things go wrong like it it, it actually benefits from you know uh, destruction or damage or whatever the case may be and um in in theory or not just in theory but it, it, if things go really really bad well if you are a buyer of a put then it's going to it's 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 going to benefit if things go really really bad but still if you understand kind of the basics of probabilities you know that at best you have a 50 50 shot regardless if you buying something deep in the money um when you are buying an option you only have 50 50 for you are at best a 50 50 shot and so I want to kind of break that down and why is that the case and and and, and kind of uh, go over that really really quickly so for example purposes if we look at this 42 days to expiration with this SPY okay, and if we are going to buy something um, at the money here okay, if we're going to buy something at the money this is this is the at the money line this is usually considered 50 50. you got a coin flipping chance of making money but technically it's 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 more than a 50 50 chance if you are the seller and less than a 50 50 chance if you are the buyer so for example purposes um if you if you buy this 380s this 385 um call right um, well, the best probability you can have, as Tasty Work is indicating here at expiration, probabilities are all based on expiration, is a 34% chance of winning at expiration. Okay? And if I if I sell this call, right, and I'm selling this in the money, so I, it's not great, but I'm selling this in the money, I still have better than a 50-50 shot of winning at expiration i have a 66 percent chance of winning it's the same kind of concept if you do it on the other side right if i do this put side and and i'm, I'm i have a 63 percent chance of winning a little out of the money on this put side and if i buy it then i only have a 37 percent chance of winning right now but what if i buy something deep in the money i just say i go over here and i look at this call and this is a 99 delta right here on this call Say if I buy this call and I buy it, I buy it um, at the mid price. Okay. Well, I still, I still don't have a 50-50 shot of winning at expiration. I have a 48%. I'm close to 50, but I still don't have a 50-50 shot. And why is that the case if you're the buyer? Well, you still have to factor in the price, right? You take this amount you're paying and you add it to that strike price, right? So you take the 150 plus the 236.96 well you need it you need this to actually be at at expiration higher than 386.96 right that's more than what is currently trading at right now right so you all you have less than the 50 50 shot of winning at expiration less than a coin flipping chance right so you don't want to be fooled by kind of probabilities and um, kind of randomness of options and so forth. You want to know what is going on when you're doing something. When you put it on a trade, what are your real probabilities of being successful? Okay. So once again, 
probabilities are based on a formula. It's like a black shows formula. And it's based on all the buying and selling of all the calls and the puts within an expiration period. So in this example, the 42 days, the expiration from all of that and an implied volatility is formed. Right. And then from that, the a a um, expected move is created. Okay? And this is this expected move is saying based on the implied volatility of all the buying and selling of all the calls and puts within this expiration period, the the expected move at expiration is expected to expire plus or minus 21 points, a little over 21 here, right? So the so options can literally predict the future with a win rate of 68% of the time or one standard deviation of time, but it does not mean, and this is the key to not being fooled, it does not mean that these this option, this option um, um, period, that it's only going to move plus or minus 21 points, right? It can move 200 points up or down in the next um, 42 days. But at expiration, 68% of the time, it's going to expire within this expected move, okay? So kind of the way to not get fooled by what could happen sometimes is kind of understanding the probability of touch. And just a back of the envelope, back of the hand type of calculation probability of touch is two times delta, right? So if you have a delta of 50, then it's it's basically 100% chance it's going to be touched, okay? And if you have a delta of 15, right? So at expiration, it's a 15% chance it's gonna expire below this 357 strike, but it has a 30% chance that it could touch this strike within this expiration period. So probability of touch is two times delta. Okay? So you don't want to be fooled by expected moves and probabilities based on delta and so forth because things could happen, things could change. So if you're someone that gets nervous as the price gets closer to at the money, then you shouldn't be someone that is buying or, or or selling something at a 30 delta or higher because you actually have a 60% chance, more likely than not, you're going to be, this strike is going to be touched or breached within this time frame. So if you are not comfortable with that, then you wouldn't initiate a trade that high in deltas because more likely than not, you're going to be breached and touched. But you still have the probabilities on your side that it's not going to expire be below 372, because that's how that's how deltas that's how deltas work based on probabilities. It's all about expiration at the 42 42 days from now at expiration. So another way to kind of look at that is is that this uh, this if we go to this SPX right now and we look at the zero DTE trade if we if we go here and we go and we put, we we look at these deltas here. Um, so if I sell something here at this 18 delta, right? Well, it's it's telling me it's only an 18% chance it's going to expire below there. But you can see that I can still be touched or threatened as if the market goes up, and this is going up on an option chain. I can easily be threatened on this type of trade and have to get out of it before it even touches, but it's still a decent probability that it's going to be it's going to be touched. It's not it's less than 50/50, but it's it's it, you can still have a chance to be touched here, right? And, and and the same kind of concept on the put side. So if you did if you had an iron condor or a strangle on like this, then you can see that you really don't have a lot of room on each side because if the market decides to go outside of the expected move on the put side, it's going to you're going to be breached. And if it decides that okay, I'm not going to do it on the put side, but I'm going to do it on the call side, then you you can be breached. So this is a tough situation for a zero DTE trade uh, because you're so close inside of the expected move. But if you sit and just let things play out. 72% um, of the time, you're going to actually win on this trade um, because it's going to expire within this range 
it's going to expire within this range or it's going to expire within the range of the of the premium that you have received right and within the premium range that you receive so what does that mean well that means that okay well you're receiving let's just say six dollars here right let's just round it up to six dollars to make this easier to understand well, you technically don't start losing at expiration until it's six dollars below this thirty-eight forty-five or six dollars above this thirty-eight ninety-five, right? Because if this is cash settled index, so it makes it really, really clear. If it expired at thirty-eight forty-four, right? Thirty-eight forty-four, then that means you would be one dollar in the money. Right. So that means you would lose one hundred dollars per contract. And this is one contract that we're looking at. So you'll lose one hundred dollars. But someone originally paid you six hundred dollars. So that means you would you would actually make five hundred dollars on this trade. Okay? You, you can't start losing uh, at expiration until it's past six dollars. So if it if it went down five dollars and fifty cents past your strike here, this 3845 strike, you would still win $50, right? Because you're 50 cents away from, you collected 50 cents more than what your, your settlement, your cash settlement price was going to be. So it's pretty powerful to kind of understand the probabilities, how they work, how does your premium work? How does the deltas work at expiration? How does they work based on probability of touch? And how does buying things really work, right? Do you can you have a higher than a 50-50 shot when you buy? No, most of the time it's less than a 50-50 shot at expiration. Doesn't mean you can't win when you buy something before expiration, and that's what you should. That's how you should tr tr uh, trade things that you buy. You want to get out of it sooner because it's going to help your probabilities a little better. But when if you wait to expiration, it's almost always going to be less than 50 percent probability at expiration if you're the buyer okay all right so this is kind of what i wanted to talk about kind of give an introduction to the basics of um, probabilities of options and we'll talk about this more in the future but for time purposes this is what i wanted to cover um, this morning